In this video, I'm going to show you two ways you can get rid of blurry text in your Adobe Captivate project. Okay, so both of the solutions I'm going to share with you today are, are not new. Um, one in particular I've been using almost exclusively for all of my projects to avoid the whole blurry font issue. Um, the other solution is an older solution, and uh, I learned about this from other Adobe Captivate experts. And, uh, you know, it's a good solution. In fact, I think it was Joe Ganchi who shared this solution with me uh, when I first was aware of it. But I'll share it with you today. So um, here's the problem. I have a project, as you can see on my screen here. It's a relatively small project. Um, usually nowadays I do larger projects for larger monitors, but back in the early days of e-learning, it wasn't uncommon to have 800 by 600, or in this case, 800 by 490. And the result is that when you go to publish or preview in HTML5 in browser, um, which of course is the way we publish nowadays, the problem is, is that you get blurry fonts. And if I zoom in into my browser, you can really see this clearly, that the title, the text, and the individual click items, even my buttons, have blurry fonts. And that's not great, of course. Uh, we want to give our learners uh, you know, a nice learning interaction that looks modern and uh, up-to-date and uh, professional. So how do we fix this problem? Well. I have two solutions. So the first solution is uh, dependent on your ability to use HTML scaling. HTML scaling, simply put, either stretches or shrinks your slides in the browser window that you're using. I like to use HTML scaling if I don't know what the device is that my learners are using. So it's something you can turn on. Now, when you turn it on, when you stretch something out really large, it's going to show off anything that's low quality. So I usually design with a much higher resolution in mind. So here's what I do. In my project, um, what I'll do is I will modify and rescale the project to be much larger than it is here. So in this case here, uh, I might go 1469 by 900, something like that. 1470 is usually what I use. Make sure you maintain aspect ratio. Some of things like your background images might need to be updated for this larger size. But if I go ahead and click finish, you'll see, of course, some craziness occur on the screen for a moment or two. And then eventually everything will look normal again. But of course, your slide is now much larger. In this case here, I'm essentially double the original size. But that's okay. With HTML scaling turned on, your slide will look great. So let's preview this now and see what a difference that makes. So if I shrink this down to normal size, that's much better. Again, if I zoom in real close, you can tell that it's still converted the text into a series of images. And that's why you get the blurriness to begin with. This isn't a problem in responsive design because responsive design projects all get published with actual text because of word wrapping and things like that. But in a non-responsive design project, this is what happens. Now, the other solution, let me revert this back to its original size. Let's say, for example, you're unable to um, use that larger size for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the original size of uh, 800 by 490, I think it was. And we'll just zoom back in here. So the other solution is how can we force Captivate to render these text objects as actual text rather than images? And the solution is to add something that makes the text dynamic. So what we can do is we can create a variable and tack it on to the end or somewhere in each of these text objects so that the contents of that variable are displayed to the learner. Now, we don't want that variable to affect the appearance of the uh, items on screen. So what I like to do is I go into my variables uh, window from the project drop-down menu, and I create a new variable called 
underscore null. And I usually use this for other purposes as well, but I don't give it a value. So we'll just save that and we can close the variables window. Now here's the key. I can just add that variable to be displayed, the contents of the variable to be displayed in all of my text objects. Many people put it at the end, but it actually doesn't matter what you display because of course, or where you display it, because of course, there's nothing inside that variable. You're just forcing Captivate to convert this into dynamic text. So if I select the null variable, doesn't matter the maximum length, because again, it has no value presently, and click OK, right in the middle of accordion, I'm going to display the value of that variable. And we can do the same thing for other text objects on the slide. You can use this as many times as you wish. I'm going to use it on each of my accordion items here. And like I said, it doesn't matter where it goes. We can put it uh, at the end, which is a common practice. You can actually put it right at the beginning if you wish. It does not matter. It will not impact the positioning of these text items once you render it out for preview. And we'll put one in the middle of the back button here as well, just to show you what that looks like when you're done. So let's go ahead and do a preview in HTML5 in browser. It's a really great solution if you have the forethought to do this up front. Uh, unfortunately, if you've already built your project, it means you're going to have to do a little bit of work here. So let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see that we've actually got regular text for all these items. There's no blurriness left. And even with our back button with the variable right in the middle, it doesn't affect the layout or the, uh, the, the lining up of your text objects themselves. So both solutions work relatively well. This one probably a little bit better because it forces all your text to become real text. But if you're having trouble with blurry text, hopefully one of these two solutions will help you out. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.